voices that you hear from the depths of your being, the voice that asks you to come back, the voice that says, you are not a stranger, you are our own son. It is your own recognition of the journey of life. You have passed through the same streets again and again and again. Now you have realized that there is no point in just going around in circles. How long? Let me move in a different direction. That is why something fundamentally shifts when you decide to pursue a path that leads to your highest self. The way you move changes. You cannot move the same way you've been moving in the world. You cannot think the same way you've been thinking in the world. Your action cannot be purpose or goal oriented. You cannot be measuring your progress. All this belongs to the mind. Something has to fundamentally change. Something changes. If you truly understand what the change is, it is your recognition of something called love. Love is what gives you the necessary strength to move in the opposite direction of the mind. Love is what connects you to your higher being. Love is what pushes you along the path. And because now you know how to recognize that love, listen to the voice of love, your mind is no longer the most powerful thing. Enlightened beings are the guiding light of humanity. They are the reservoirs of wisdom. If not for them, you cannot even imagine what a dark and desolate place the world would have been. It is because even in our misunderstanding, their truth shines that we are able to search for our higher selves. Imagine the world without Buddha, without Jesus, without all the enlightened teachers and their wisdom. What would be the purpose of life? It would be so mechanical, so dry. Yes, probably it would be a little less chaotic because there would be no necessity to misunderstand their teachings. There would be no necessity to create religions. There would be no necessity for hatred the world would probably would have been a little more peaceful, but it would have been utterly devoid of meaning. It would have been a dry mechanical place. What we are searching for is not just a peaceful place around us. Even if all the religions were to disappear right now, still your search for meaning, your search for purpose, cannot be replaced by anything that is already here. You have to find it on your own. In a way, that is the double-edged sword of religion. If you take away religiousness completely from the world, you don't know what to ask. You don't know where to go. You don't know which path to take. But if you completely accept religions and their interpretation of the truth, you are lost even more. Because their interpretation is the interpretation of the mind. It is not silence that is speaking those words. Only silence can interpret the words of enlightened beings. 
and religions don't have time for silence. They are too noisy. They are too busy. It's the same mind just in religious clothing and religious words. Same ambition, same greed. Same misunderstanding of the nature of reality. Mind by its very nature can never understand truth. Can never understand the nature of the soul. So while it is there, it keeps on doing other things. It keeps on distracting the soul. It keeps on throwing one or the other distraction in front of the soul. And when the soul begins to ascend, it wants to detach itself from the mind, the mind cries. It wants it back. But what is the use? What is the point of attaching yourself again to the mind when you have realized that mind is not your true home? It is just a condition. It's just a happening that has to be transcended. 